Toro costume jewelry. Trafari and Crown Trafari jewelry. Miriam Haskell. Costume jewelry again. Trafari Monet. Various types of Coro. Weiss. Listener. Napier. Signer. Christian, Dior, and much, much more. A one and a two and a three. Rusty the reseller, he'll sell you the shirt off his back. <laughs> well, I have done it. How to cousins, Rusty the reseller here. Today's video is all about jewelry. We're going to go through this costume jewelry jar. I'm going to show you how I inspect stuff. Maybe you are aware, maybe you were not aware that costume jewelry, certain brands, certain types can sell for gobs of money. And folks, that's what I do. I buy and I resell. So let's get right into this. Let's learn the things to look for when you're inspecting this type of jewelry. And I'll give you some tips on whether or not it's worth selling, how to sell it, and much more. We're going to get right into it today, folks. Not a lot of fluff. If you know my channel, I don't. Uh, I try to just be straight to the point, really educate you. But, of course, I'll have to drop something that I, I almost never say. But, you know, might as well. I got your ear for a moment. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And if you want to see videos when they drop out, make sure you click on the little bell icon so that you'll be reminded when new videos come out. If you like antiques, folks, we got a whole playlist on just antiques. If you like postcards, go over to our postcard one. We've got one on jewelry and much more. So when we're done here, feel free to peruse the channel and just take a look at what we got here. This is, uh, this I paid $40, four zero American U.S. greenbacks for this uh, jewelry jar here, folks. And uh, they said it was, quote unquote, high-end jewelry. I poured it all out here so we can take a look at it. What does that mean? What is high-end uh, jewelry? This is a costume jewelry, I'm assuming. Um, and uh, we're going to go through this real quick. I'm going to show you how I inspect stuff. I'm going to show you if something's complete, you know, uh, you know, basically worthless, or if it's something that I would resell, if I would resell it individually in a group. And then we'll take a look at the end, uh, maybe if any of these have sold and or to kind of give you an idea of is costume jewelry um, valuable? Is it not valuable? What am I going to do with it? Let's get in. Let's start with this little bracelet. So <clears throat> if you pull this up close, you're going to see uh, this is uh, it's quite pretty. Uh, you know, it's in a particular style of, of make, which I've seen. Uh, it's kind of this uh, flat backs of this. If we look here, there's a little, uh, little tab here you can press. This opens it up. You can see this has a chain attached to it. So at one point in time, uh, this little claw type um, clasp was attached to something over here, and I'm not exactly sure where it is. It may have uh, come off, maybe right there, or maybe it's supposed to attach uh, right there. But you can see, uh, of course, we're gonna look at the backs. That's what you always wanna do if you're new to the channel and you're new to jewelry or inspecting jewelry. Uh, you learn way more from looking at the back of uh, not the shiny part the other part that's where you're going to find uh maker's marks you're going to find whether or not it's uh, very good if it's the quality is very good or not and if it has any sort of precious or semi-precious metals um this i'm not seeing any marks so i'm, I'm guessing and also just the feel of it and the look of it this is just a basic alloy um, but you know, it's, it's nice for costume. It's a very glam, very bling. I mean, those are the words you'd look uh, for, or you'd see in titles of things uh, selling on eBay. Uh, this could definitely uh, sell. Um, one of the reasons I probably wouldn't sell it individually is if you look through here and you examine closely, there are a lot of stones. And so before I would buy this individually, let's say I would want to make sure that all the stones are intact from the end here. You can see one, two, 
are missing. Keep going. Yep, you see it too. Three, four. Mm, yeah, four stones, which, you know, not bad for, you know, given how many are in this. But because of the color and the size, it may be difficult to find ones to replace in this. Uh, with rhinestone jewelry where it's clear, like this one right here, made to look like diamonds or synthetic stones, these are easier. There's a lot of uh, costume pieces that have clear, round-cut stones. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very common for us to um, replace and repair pieces before we sell them. This would be, this is fine. I wouldn't necessarily call this high-end. It's maybe high-end looking, but it is not actually a high-end piece of jewelry. Why don't, why don't we just jump right into this since we had it uh, as a comparison piece. Uh, the back of it, I like the, the make of it. Um, now, again, you know, for those of you who are just learning, uh, whenever you look at the back of a piece and you see that it's closed, meaning there's no open and no window uh, behind the stone, that's a pretty good indication that the, the stones you're looking at are not that valuable. They're either made of plastic or they're made of glass um, or something like that. And or this, the back of the stone where it's set has actually been painted or colored in some sort of a metal or a foil color in order to... Um, to uh, give it a certain color or a certain a reflective nature. I see no maker's marks or indication that this is silver, so it probably is not. Again, though it's a nice looking piece, a little brooch, um, you know, kind of round, and it's got all the stones intact, so that's not too, that's not too bad. Let's pull these up real quick. Let's talk about pearls, shall we? Now, pearls are a thing that are not really all that in vogue right now. It's just not, uh, people are not wearing a whole lot of pearls these days. This was, a, you know, um, a particular type of, of thing that was very commonplace during a large period of time. And it's sort of not as exciting anymore. Um, one thing you'll notice here is that this strand in between these uh, are little knots in the um, and on what it is strung on, this cord. Um, whenever you find pieces that do not have knots in between, meaning the pearls or the things that are supposed to be pearls are actually next to one another with no separation, uh, that's a, usually almost, well, nine times out of ten or more, that's an indication that it is not, they are not real pearls. Because real pearls are fragile. They're, you know, an organic material and you don't want them damaged. And so they put the knots in between them to hold them in place and also to prevent them from rubbing against one another because that will damage them. So authentic pearls are going to have these little knots. Now, the exception there would be uh, pearls uh, and strands not, that are not uh, on metal, of course, on, on actual cord, can be fragile over time. If yanked on or pulled, uh, can deteriorate and break. And when they break, all the pearls fall off. And so what some people would do is they would, uh, you know, if they had the money, they'd take them in to have them restrung. If they didn't have the money, they would restring them themselves, and they may not have known that you're supposed to nod in between. And so I have seen uh, authentic pearl necklaces, very nice ones, with no knots in between. Now, if that's discovered, you really should uh, either, if you know how to do it, restring it with knots in between to protect the integrity of the pearl or take it in some place to have that done. This one, it's got a decent weight. Um, there are knots in between. Now, if you start looking real closely at the edge, you'll see some flaking around the edge. And so what you're seeing is around the edge of that, uh, I believe, now I'm not 100% certain, but I believe what you're seeing is uh, some of the um, kind of the gloss uh, on the outside of it kind of flaking off where it's been drilled into and worn. The other thing about pearls is they're imperfect. So if you find something that they are perfectly round and perfectly the same size all around, that's not a very good indication. On the end here, I see Something that looks like kind of a brassy, coppery color clasp here, but no indications of gold. That could be gold-plated. I actually don't know for sure if these are, you know, uh, actual pearls or if these are um, are not. However, they're they're passing several of the tests. Uh, this is like a, what they would call a champagne color. I think they're quite beautiful and definitely something that I would be willing to resell. Let's keep moving forwards here. Since we went with pearls the first time, uh, why not grab these? I don't know 
Um, if I'll be able to get these out, looks like some of this stuff is kind of tangled a little bit. Uh, well, maybe we'll get to them later. In that case, let's pull out this, which is kind of folded in on itself, but it is a necklace that is made up of a lot of links that are these like leave, leaves. Okay, all the way to the end, here's a clasp. We're gonna examine the clasp. The underside of the clasp, nothing. The upper side of the clasp, we're going to see right here. See if I can zoom in on that right there. Uh, come on now. Well, I don't know if it's gonna do it. Napier is what it is. I don't know if you can see that or not. There it is, boom. And it says patent and it has this large number there. 4774.743. This is uh, the patent number for this particular clasp. I don't know if Napier, the company, created that one or if it was another company. But you can see that is the brand name. Let me zoom back out here. It's a very beautiful necklace. All of the links are intact. There are no stones. Uh, it's very classy looking, kind of a classic look. It just, uh, this clasp uh, wraps around here on this end. That's how it, it uh, goes together. So we have our first piece that has a brand name. Napier definitely does resell. It's not one of the highest ends, but it is, uh, it's not bad. It's, it's decent. It's a decent brand. Okay, we'll pull this up. Maybe I can grab a hold of this. Oh my goodness, it's just, they just keep coming. Okay, we got it all out of here. This is the kind of the downside about people who drop things in the jars. I know they're, you know, it's the jewelry jar thing is it's a, it's a thing, but uh, sometimes this stuff gets all wound up together. Here's the clasp, and as I circle around, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm looking at it's a very uh, kind, of, kind of nicely molded uh, claw type clasp here. But as I rotate around, you'll see right here there is some sort of insignia of a brand, and then it also says nine two five. So. According to that stamp, this is sterling silver. I don't know though, folks, like that, the, the kind of that, um, I don't know, that soft kind of uh, non-shiny type of a finish is not, is not typically indicative of sterling silver. It's kind of a weird, it's kind of suspect to me a little bit, but, and here we have pearls, uh, quote unquote pearls again, you've got these knots in between, and now we have multicolored ones in more of um, kind of an oblong, or more like an oval or egg type shape and not like fully round. Um, you know, if, if, some, if this genuinely is sterling silver, then there's a higher chance that these are authentic pearls. But, you know, you know, pearls in these colors, if they were these actual colors, these would have to be dyed or these would have to be synthetic pearls. So some things suspect on that. It's, you know, it's somewhat attractive of a necklace and intact. So I could certainly sell that uh, in a group or even individually. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't feel terribly confident that that is actually made out of silver. Sometimes those stamps are uh, not authentic, right? And the person who sold this either knew it or didn't know it or didn't care. And, uh, you know, it's not a big deal to me because I think that there's a variety of other stuff in here I can sell for $40. Um, you know, I don't think it's too bad. I'm going to, I'm not going to mess with uh, trying to get all of this completely undone while we're looking here, but I've got this other necklace here. Some sort of like this. It's not exactly a pendant, but it terminates here in this sort of interesting way. I'm looking at the back. One of the indications of stuff that's a little bit lower end is this real uh, lined intentional texture. Folks, this is done intentionally. Whenever these pieces of metal are molded, they are molded exactly the, the way that they are originally made, okay? So the only reason to put streaks, I mean, if, if they hadn't put this in, it would just be a flat, smooth surface. A lot of cheaper designers will make these lines in order to make it look a little bit more interesting or make it look, I don't know what, but I, in my, in my uh, experience, there is a lot of low-end costume jewelry, haze lines. And recently on a comment, somebody actually called me out on that and said, well, you know, it's not all that way. Like, you know, sure. Are there going to be exceptions to the rules? Yeah, always there are. But I'll tell you what, uh, when I'm looking at, say, the backs of earrings that I see or different things, and they have this type of texture, almost always they're not going to have a maker's mark on them. And most of the time, higher-end stuff does have a maker's mark because they want you to know exactly who it is. Like if Chanel or, you know, Christian Dior or one of these companies comes out with something really nice, they want you to know 
that they have good designs, right? Okay, so this is a fairly pretty uh, piece. Let's look here at the end. This is the drop part. This right here would be where the hook would hook on, and you've got different loops, so you have different options of lengths depending on your neck size or how low you want it to drop. And uh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, this is, looks like a Coro, and it looks like uh, maybe a newer of the Coro line. It's beautiful. People definitely uh, buy Coro stuff. The stuff that sells the best is usually brooches and things with very colored, colorful rhinestones. So this actually is a little bit of an exception. I know I, you know, I may have just put my foot in my mouth. I don't think uh, fully I did because I still stand by what I said, but this is an exception where I, I like the Coro brand, but if I had not searched for uh, that name or searched up by the latch, I would have probably just passed on this. So, uh, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover, but there's sometimes signs, sometimes things conflict with what you know, and that's okay, but that's why you do your research and you spend your time. I would probably try to sell that by itself because Coro is a decent brand. All right, here we go. We got another little brooch here. Got an earring kind of stuck in there. This looks like uh, some sort of a mother of pearl or some sort of shell that has been cut. You can see that. And underneath here, it says Bethlehem. So interesting. This, I guess, is the Star of David. And, uh, and it's ornately carved out. Beautiful little brooch. Yeah, I like that. Moving forwards, we have this necklace in the same sort of style as that one by Napier, where you have the different links. These are, uh, you know, leaves. This is in a white uh, metal type tone. You have this link area up here, again, where you can clasp it based on your preferences for how it would hang on your neck. And then you've got this little hook. I'm looking around the hook. I'm not seeing any sort of brand name. Nothing on the end of this ball, nothing here. And then if we search underneath uh, on the bottoms of these links, what we're looking for is to see, is there anything, uh, any manufacturer? You can see some of these bumps, okay? And some of these bubbly pieces here like this, you can see that kind of raised right there, these little bumps. Those things uh, happen whenever you have a base alloy metal and then you coat or you plate. And actually, this, this may be just uh, something in the mold. They actually might have done that uh, to indicate that may be some sort of a mark of a manufacturer. But when they're not, when they're kind of um, sporadic and they're not like defined uniform, like see, here's one here. Same spot one here, same spot one here. So this was actually done intentionally, but you should keep an eye though on the backs of pieces and we'll see in here if we find any later that can, that's just sort of like a cheap plating of a metal to give it a pretty appearance on the outside when in reality it's just kind of an, a very, very cheap aluminum or base type metal on the inside. No maker's mark, still classy looking. So I'm starting to wonder if maybe when they say high end, they're really referring to just kind of the, the motifs the um, kind of the look of the pieces and, and less about like the quality of their make and or the designers. But here's a beautiful little brooch. We have uh, this little bird with these kind of like purplish lavender type rhinestones and some white. And just kind of looking at it, it appears that most, if not all, you know, yeah, I guess they're, I think most of those are intact. That's wonderful. When we turn it all over, we're going to very easily and obviously see Monet as the designer. It's a beautiful little piece, and that would I would I would certainly sell that by itself. There are people who a collect brooches, b collect Monet, and c collect bird related costume jewelry. All right, I've been looking at this this cuff for a moment, and let's kind of look into it here. Beautiful, uh, sort of this beautiful little etched design as you can see you go around here and then all of a sudden now you've got a bunch of stones now they range in color some of these are much murkier looking like this one's very kind of like almost gray next to a very bright one okay and so this is an indication of sort of cheap these are these are rhinestones these are not actual diamonds i can tell you right away without even looking at it, just based on the look of it so when you pinch into these little clasps this thing opens up you roll around 
I'm looking, I'm looking right now, folks, I'm looking in here to see, is there any metal or any uh, maker's marks, any stamps? I'm not seeing it, but let's just sort of start to rotate around, see what we might see. Okay, boom, got to the edge here of the hinge, and now we see a name, and it says Alco, A-L-L-C-O. You see that? A-L-L-C-O. All right, so we'll have to look that up. I'm not terribly familiar with that brand, but it is a beautiful design. I wish that these stones, which are all intact, which is good news, but just look how kind of grimy and dirty they look. And it's not like I can clean them. There is no window on the back, right? There's nothing to allow the light through. So these are likely just pieces of plastic and maybe have sort of a gray, uh, silvery uh, color painted on the back of them to reflect light back out. But that is pretty enough. I could probably sell it on its own. I wouldn't expect to get a lot of money from it though, because uh, unless it turns out that that brand is, uh, is valuable, uh, then perhaps I could get a bit more. Moving forwards, we got this. This is definitely some sort of maybe Jasper, uh, some type of, uh, you know, mineral uh, that people like to polish up in orbs. They use it for beads. They use it for slabs, for pieces of jewelry. Just a little bracelet here. Nothing special about this. There's no maker's marks on it or whatever. But it's got this little, uh, you know, eye, a uh, little hook, uh, not a hook, but like a rod that kind of holds it in place like that. It is on metal. It's not uh, elasticy. Uh, so somebody who you know enjoys wearing pieces with uh, bracelets with with beads and things on it might find that interesting. Here is a little screw back earring, and we're looking at P and F. P is that a P or is that an R? P P and F. I don't know what P and F stands for, but I will look it up. All these jewels are intact, gray, kind of, grayish. Again, these should be clear and bright clear, but they are gray over time. We got these blues, uh, kind of a, actually more of like a, like a blue green. And then this is kind of a beautiful, almost topaz looking color. Again, on the back, you can see technically, technically speaking, there is an opening in the back. However, upon closer examination, do you see how the back of that stone looks gold? You see how the tips of those look like the same color as this? Well, that's because those pieces have been colored. These are pieces of plastic, folks. Also, take a look at the hint or the um, this little piece that holds these in place. They are very, very superficial. If I just took my thumbnail, I could very easily, if I can get my thumbnail on it, I could pry that thing back and that could fall out. That's another indication that these are not terribly valuable stones. If they're that easy to fall out, um, you need to have some sort of a bezel or some sort of prongs that are very, very significant hold that in place. But that's beautiful. I'm going to put it to the side, though, hoping that maybe its partner is in here someplace. Same thing with this. Here's another, like, oh, this is much prettier. Bright in the middle. Not a lot of fading. A lot of green on the back. This is very, this is a very pretty. This makes me think of something from, like, that oftentimes will say things like West Germany or Austria on them, pieces that were made back in the early 1900s in Europe. But that's a very beautiful piece. I like that. I'm just kind of jumping around with these earrings here. I'm going to look, look for the partners in a bit. But, okay, look at this. Well, on the back, right away, Haskell. Is it Ju Juliana Haskell? I can't remember the first name, but Haskell is a pretty well-known and well-respected and well-collected brand of costume jewelry. This is, again, one of these uh, kind of screw-back clip. It's it's kind of both. It's a, it's a screw. It screws in and out to clamp, but it also uh, steps in, you know, place there. We got this white, just a very white, very classic look. Kind of got these bead, the swirly sort of look around the edge. And it's definitely a nice piece. And then let's just grab one more. Well, here's his partner. Good. We got that one there. And then here's another little pink one, sort of a similar design. I wonder if this is also a Haskell, but you've got kind of this almost like a crown look around the side. This is synthetic, but it it's made to look kind of like an angel skin coral. Um, what do we got back here? Castle Cliff. So again, it's not a screw, it's just a clip. In definitely rougher condition in the back, you see some, some green, some tarnishing from, and that green happens when it is, uh, you know, a metal that is 
uh, not silver. Silver doesn't tarnish green, neither does, uh, does gold. That's an indication of uh, sort of lesser quality uh, metals. But we can, we can clean that up a little bit. But that's a very beautiful piece. And I'm wondering, um, not seeing them from the get-go. Well, here it is. There is its partner. Very nice. More earrings look like, oh, nope, it is not an earring. These are, this is like a sweater clip or something like that. These are just pieces of wood, it looks like, set in to these clips. And if you open, if you look on the side of the clips, no names, no names. Open it up, nothing underneath that I can see. So, no brand names, but these are also things with, with uh, you know, fake pearls here, strung on metal, little eyelets. Um, somebody might have a use for that, but this is again a piece, a type of piece of jewelry that is not used as much anymore. Cufflinks, tie bars, um, sweater clips, things like that. Um, napkin rings. I mean, there's a variety of, of things in the jewelry or, um, you know, table set and type, type genres that were very popular at a certain time in, in, uh, in our country and in Europe that are no longer used as much, but Okay, now we have a pretty intricate looking bracelet here. Got the clasp here, got this sort of design coming off of it, swaying out, and then chains with uh, faux pearls in this gold toned fashion that can kind of lay along itself. Um, not too, but not too bad. Okay, let's so we're looking at the top, nothing there. We're gonna unclip it, open it up, nothing on the inside so far. And then if we flip everything over, okay, boom. You're seeing that as well as I am. Lisner, L-I-S-N-E-R. That's a decent costume brand. Uh, definitely a, a market for Lisner related uh, jewelry items. This is kind of twisted up a little bit. We'll have to kind of work on that, try to get it undone a bit more, but this would be a nice piece. The difficulty with this, as you can see, as I'm just struggling with it here, is that it, it, this can be the type of piece that's difficult to uh, photograph, to make it look the way that you, you know, it's intended. Um, do you put it on a, a, like a, a stand that you would put um, like watches on? How, what's the best way to photograph this? Sometimes I just do exactly what I'm showing you right here. I just sort of take pictures of different parts while it's in my hand so they can see generally what it would look like or if we can get a model and have it on their hand uh, one that doesn't have the hair on the hand like I do <laughs> preferably uh, then that would give a better idea but you could certainly sell that piece individually because uh, that's a decent brand nice little gold tone butterfly brooch people who like butterflies would be interested in that a k and I don't know the name of, of that brand, AK. I'm not as familiar. I've seen it before. I don't remember what it is. But the fact that it has a brand mean it's, means it's more likely to sell faster and for more money. And that's, in, that's generally true of costume jewelry. If it has a brand name, it's more likely to sell than one that doesn't. And it's going to sell faster and for more money. Um, again, because, why is that? Because generally, the nicer brands will brand their stuff. And so you get what you pay for kind of thing. This is an interesting, got these kind of, these little rods with little soldered beads on either end, holding it into place. It's a very simplistic, uniform piece. Looks like gold, gold tone. It isn't gold. At least it's not marked as such. It doesn't feel like it to me either. And there are no indications of a maker or a brand. So this is a cheaper piece of jewelry, but, you know, is this designed to look you know, fairly classy, very classic. Not too bad. What else do we have in here? This is interesting. We got this. I would have expected this to be a brooch, but it is not. It is a button. Do you see that? It would have been sewn on some sort of garment. You've got a couple things going on here. Number one, you've got a ceramic, a piece of ceramic on the, on the top here. It has been hand painted. It's a woman with a basket. If I kind of turn it, you got this kind of gold, so you got ceramic, hand painted, uh, gold leaf painted in it and around the edge, and uh, a type of mineral that's a reflective kind of silvery called marcasite, and that was very popular during the Victorian era. Um, 
and and jewelry of that time. So I don't know if this is a a a redone piece or if this is an authentic older uh, piece. But uh, I'm, I'm my my feeling is that this is an older piece. I think this is the oldest piece we've come across in this. So that's a piece of vintage kind of antique jewelry. Um, now we have this, what they call the Aurora Borealis, which is kind of this iridescent color scheme mixed with other colors. And these are like earth tones, almost like fall colors. Some, some reds and some, um, some golds. And this is a clip earring. You can see, opens and shuts. And there's a brand name, very prominent on the back. W-E-I-S-S-Y-S, -S or Vass. I don't exactly know how they pronounce it over there. Um, I say over there, I don't actually know where it's, it's produced. It might be produced in the United States, in which case, uh, I'm silly. You see this little bump here that happens during the plating process of plating a, a base metal, but Weiss is a, is a, is a nice brand. It's, uh, here we found this is the partner to the one we found earlier. And then right here is this one's. A partner those could be sold by themselves they're beautiful that all the stones are intact at least they they look to be so we do have some higher end costume brands not the highest some of the some of these brands uh, are pretty uh they, they they made they produced a lot so i'm not seeing many of the boutique stuff haskell is one of them but here's a piece uh definitely again you see what i'm talking about here with these lines Trying to make it look real, real interesting, real busy and stuff. Um, it's almost like they do that to distract you from the fact that this is just a cheap piece of metal. Um, you got stones in here. They're a beautiful emerald color, but it's in the back, no window. So these are plastic, probably with some silver color on the back end for the light to hit and reflect out. Because otherwise, like regular stones, gemstones like diamonds and topaz and everything else, actual emeralds, uh, they have color in them themselves. So when the light goes through, you're actually seeing the hue, like the richness and the actual colors, and also inclusions if it's an authentic stone. This one, however, uh, these are not. Now, they have a nice bezel, right? But I don't think that this bezel is there to hold them in place. I think that's just a look. My guess is that these are glued into place. But still, not an ugly. I mean, still a, a you know, pretty-looking uh, brooch. You don't always have to have something of a brand name in order to sell it, folks. I'm just saying, generally speaking, here we go again. Look at this. Like the, Again, the first thing I notice is, do you see how all the lines are on it? All the lines. And when I see that line, those lines, I think, yeah, there's probably not going to be a maker's mark on this because it's probably lower end. I'm struggling here. Rusty, will you just, can you get it in place, sir? Oh, I was on the wrong side. That was that was a problem. Uh, okay, so we've turned over. This is a house in the woods with a glued-in rhinestone. I kind of, I mean, I like the design of it. It's it's somewhat attractive, but definitely cheaper. Um, and no maker mark on that. Kind of getting towards the end, of the bottom of the of the jar here. A couple of pretty uh, classic-looking silvery tone earrings. And as I turn them over, you're going to see the name Trafari. And if I, I shade that, you'll see a little crown over the T. So this would be what they call Crown Trafari, which is indicative of earlier times during their, their company manufacturing things. But these are beautiful. These could sell by themselves. The, the ones we've seen so far, Haskell, Listener, uh, Coro, Weiss, Trafari. These are all really good brands to be looking for, folks. If you're new to costume jewelry, they're also easier to find than some of the other names because they did produce quite a bit and they were in business for quite a long time. Um, here, no, no, uh, no lines. The the make of this is pretty darn good. Um, on the front, simplistic but attractive. You got the orange and the blue offsetting one another. Uh, but fairly cheap, and, and one of the reasons I see that is, I mean, look at how generous the glue was in gluing uh, these uh, rhinestones in place. I mean, I can get my little my little pointer here right underneath of it. Um, kind of kind of gross. So this was kind of made. It was rushed. I mean, you can see that. Look at that. It's just oh, it's just spilled right out. Something that's a nice quality, high end. Like you're never gonna see this kind of thing. This is a cheaper piece. 
Um, but, you know, from a distance, on a sweater or on a jacket or something, that wouldn't look too bad. Here's a nice uh, little necklace. Oh, well, it's a bracelet. Yeah, look at this. Okay, so this tag is probably going to have a, a, ma a maker name on it. What do we got here? Isen. Okay, so Isen is a, a newer brand. It's something you're going to see a lot of times at, like, cheaper stores, like maybe... Um, cheap types of uh you know jewelry stores at the mall or things like that at the ends here you have these uh glued in plastic uh rhinestones but you know it's a cute little thing this you know it's it's i like that it's sim it's simplistic um not ugly you know so that could go in, in a in a group i wouldn't try to sell that individually um it would not have enough value to really carry much value but now we got these you kind of like they are convex on the top, but they've also they're also cut. And then you got this little band of of, of um, it's made to look like gemstones, but it's actually just polished, um, bumpy metal. No, there actually are a few in there, three on the top. Uh oh, don't like this. Don't like the lines. Uh. Let's see what we got here. Avon. All right, Avon is a pretty well-known brand. I would not call it high-end. I would call it lower-end. In my in my experience, uh, brands like Avon and like uh, Sarah Coventry, for example, uh, tend to, to command lower values than some of these other names. But again, not an ugly piece. And upon, depending on the rarity and how old the pieces are, sometimes even those brands that aren't as valuable typically can still command some nice prices. So always don't discount it. Definitely do your research. Here's a little clip-on earring again, and we've got the Crown Trafari once again, which is wonderful. I love uh, I love coming across Trafari stuff. Um, is the other one in here with it? I'm not seeing the other earring, but we'll... Oh, here it is. Here it is. It's escaping me. Good. We got that pair. Get a little brooch. The letter B. You can find these sometimes with all kinds of different letters. Crown Trafari again. Wonderful. We, we could make a little lot out of Trafari stuff just from this one lot. Here's interesting. GS. Um, not exactly sure. I'm sure this is some sort of military related thing. So it's not a claw clasp. It's just a, it's just a little pin that, that, that bends down. Some sort of military uh, insignia here. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's GS for Girl Scouts. I bet that's what it is. It's a Girl Scout pin, folks. Thrown in there. Not sure, quite sure how old, but that's kind of cool. All right, again, the pink color. Definitely dirty under there. Needs to be uh, cleaned off a little bit. We can polish that up. It's like a little flower, a little brooch. Avon again. And the lines, folks. The lines. Get out of here with those lines, people. You're not fooling anybody. All right, little B, a little attractive. This is just a little push pin. Pull this out the back here, and not surprised. I don't see see those lines. See those lines? I'm not seeing. Uh, I'm not seeing any maker's mark. These are most surely plastic or glass glued down into place. But somebody might want that. All right, I like the design on that. That's kind of a, a beautiful, got that ruby red in the center. And I like also like the variety. You've got the ruby red stone, prominent with prongs. We got the next round bezel set, but probably glued in. And then these fake pearls on the end in the middle of the flower. I love the design of it. I mean, just artistically speaking. And the uh, the pearls uh, are popping through on the back end. So these these might actually be real pearls. Uh, probably not, but and uh, you've got opening for that that although pretty superficial, and also it just it just it just kind of screams plastic. It's also not heavy, but that's still a, a decent looking piece to you know, look at that. Um, a decent looking piece to put in with a lot of other costume jewelry. Let's get to these last pieces. All right, so we'll just pull this up. Very, very basic chain bracelet, gold tone, M, what do we have here, what does it say, can't tell what the word is, but it's an M, 
So we'll have to look that up and then you got this little clasp. Guys, sometimes marks of gold and silver can be on this. They can even be on this part right here that, that, that uh, pulls in and out. You can see them there too. Sometimes you have to, and you have to use a magnifying glass. That's why well, Rusty keeps one with him all the time. I've not popped it out for this video yet, folks, but you always should have one on side. And this is, uh, what do we got here? Here's a little, another little bracelet. And I'm noticing something right here. And so if we take, we take our magnifying glass, we will find out exactly what it says. Uh, let's see. It says Dior. Dior. As in Christian Dior. So that's a decent little uh, bracelet right there. That'll sell just because of the brand name. Make sure you always have yourself a loop. Make sure you have uh, abilities to test metals for gold content or silver. Here's a, a little uh, class bracelet. It's kind of unique. I've not seen one exactly like this, but it's very simple in this design, but I like that okay. What we'll want to do is look on this little loop on the top here. Put my finger in it so we'll zoom. There. Nothing. There. Nothing. But then, uh, well, not all is lost. We want to look around the inside of this metal as well, even though it's really thin, because you might, and look at that. Right there, Avon. Okay, so it's another Avon brand. I like the design of this one. And I think, I can't quite tell, but it's looking like we got a couple of, it's one, is it in here? Is there another one in here? I thought I saw two. Uh, hmm. Well, if we can find the other one, here's another, uh, like an earring, right? That would probably pair well with this. Um, again, they're not right. You know, you got these on your head and this on your wrist, but these could go together for sure. And that might be a way I'd sell it, is this with these as, a, as sort of like a pair. I see these other uh, earrings right here. Let's look at these here. We've got, these are little, you know, clip-ons, you can see. And we can spin this puppy around. If it'll do it now, here we go. All right, so that's kind of a pretty little blue, like a very soft sort of blue, almost like an aquamarine color. These are not aquamarines. Um, they're plastic. It's costume jewelry, folks. Um, superficial prongs, no light through, and I'm also not seeing any sort of manufacturer name or indications of precious metals, but that would be fine in a group for sure. Another older Girl Scout pin here, folks. Uh, I think it's that the emblem design, and you've got this uh, character, this little person standing in the middle there. That's cute. It's like a vintage uh, piece. All right, getting down to the last couple of pieces here. This right here is, I also believe, a very older uh, piece of jewelry. No maker's marks, very thin metal. This is like a, uh, like a copper or a brass, probably brass, and it has also been hand painted. Um, it's some of that paint is coming off, but it's um, kind of like an enamel paint. This coppery color, this brass type metal was very, very popular in like sort of the late 1800s, mid 1800s, all the way into the 1920s um, in Victorian type jewelry uh, of that time. Last couple of things, a very, very thin uh, bracelet here, claw clasp. So we're looking at something that's you know, newer made and at the end. You've got a very simple, um, beautiful, I think it's a beautiful look. This is not totally clear. It's got a, like almost like a hint of a greenish color. So this actually might be an actual gemstone of some kind, or it's colored glass. And again, I'm looking to see there's a little ball, no indication of a maker, but I do like the color of that. That's probably also the type of thing you could find at the mall or something like that. And then finally, this pair of earrings here. It looks to me like, yeah. So this is, uh, I think this is probably genuine turquoise. And then it's sort of like a foil looking piece of metal here. These might be sterling silver. When you get these earrings that um, are like this and they aren't all round, there's like this, this part portion right here is flat. 
a lot of times if it's made of silver or gold, it'll be stamped on that section that I'm showing you right here. And I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing anything indicating that it is. So these are probably just, they, it's possible that these could be made still of silver. It definitely got, they definitely tarnish, they're tarnished like they could be made of silver. Um, but they may just be silver plated as well. Sometimes uh, when they're manufactured in other a uh, few other countries like Thailand or some of these places, they may not be marked, but they might be uh, plated. Taking a look here as it's all sort of laid out, this is what we got. This was the quote-unquote high-end jewelry jar. You know, my uh, opinion on this is that for costume jewelry, it is mid high end uh the the brands lisner weiss trafari coro haskell these are good brand names you're gonna make money on those brands if you put it in a lot you'll make the money if you sell them individually you'll make more money but it's going to take longer and so for forty dollars folks uh, i will I, I truly believe i can at least at the very least double my money um with uh, even just selling the, the ones of those brand names I mentioned to you. And then with the others, I think I could make some decent money there too. I've, I've had much worse luck on jewelry jars than this. So I hope that helps you today, folks. Um, if you have a comment or something that you saw that I missed, please let me know. And uh, again, check out uh, the rest of, we got a big old jewelry, uh, you know, kind of inspecting uh, playlist. So check that out as well. See you next time. Please go find some treasure.